Hello and welcome to the 2015 Tokyo Motor Show here in the Big Sight Center in Japan. Now, this is the home of oddball concepts, dinky kai cars, but also some of the most forward-thinking and futuristic automotive brands out there. Basically, if you want to know what the future of motoring is going to look like, then spending a few hours wandering these halls will give you a fair idea of what to expect. And no, unfortunately, it's not a flying DeLorean. Right now we're here on the Nissan stand, but we'll be bringing you all of our favorite cars from across the show floors. So please let us know what you think in the comments box below. Unfortunately, some of them are priceless one-off concepts that will probably never leave Japan, but more than a few are destined for UK showrooms. So keep an eye out for those. As it turned out, the very first press conference of the day at Mazda was also one of the most significant at the Tokyo show. Rumours had been rife that the brand, which made rotary engines famous by winning with one at Le Mans, had kept working on the technology, and here was the proof. The RX Vision is a stunning two-seater sports car concept, with a long bonnet and similar proportions to that of the Jaguar F-Type Coupe, but it will be powered by a new generation rotary engine, dubbed Sky Active R. Mazda claims to have solved all of the issues with the RX-8, including its lack of torque, poor reliability and high fuel consumption. It could also be due for production as early as 2017, and company sources say that it will target the Porsche Cayman, both in terms of price and performance. Sadly, no specifics on the engine details were given at the time, but the concept stole an awful lot of hearts at the show, so we hope the production car will do the same. A stone's throw from the Mazda stand, Nissan strutted its stuff in a rather different way, but its concept, dubbed the IDS, definitely set the tone for the rest of the show. Nissan is putting its money where its mouth is with what it believes is the future of alternative fuels. The four-door concept is a glimpse at how the next generation LEAF is likely to look. Not only is it electric with a 60 kilowatt battery and carbon fiber body for significantly boosted range, but it also debuts Nissan's Intelligent Drive, a fully autonomous, artificially intelligent system that can take over all of the driving duties for you, whilst the interior transforms itself into a cozy lounge. It might all sound far-fetched, but the brand says that by 2020, this technology will be ready and affordable for most people, and that the IDS will help cut emissions and road deaths. Not every brand was looking into the far-flung future though. Over at Porsche, the covers quietly slipped off the new turbocharged 911 Carrera 4 and the latest model to get the full GTS treatment, the Macan SUV. Both cars should be in showrooms by early next year, with the Macan priced at £55,000. Its 3.0-litre twin-turbo V6 has more power and torque than the standard car, 355 brake horsepower and 369 pounds-feet of it to be exact, which means it'll do 160 miles an hour and 0-62 miles an hour in just 5 seconds flat. The adaptive suspension is lowered by 15mm compared to the standard car, and it also gets a host of optional goodies as standard, including a sports exhaust, 20-inch black alloys, and an Alcantara-lined interior. Hot on the heels of the Toyota Mirai, Honda chose to use Tokyo as the launch pad for its own hydrogen-powered mass production model, the Clarity FCV. Somehow, its engineers have managed to squeeze the fuel cell stack, lithium-ion battery pack and electric motor into the same space as a conventional V6, so there is room inside for five adults. There are no gears, but power output is a healthy 172 brake horsepower, and Honda is claiming a range of 435 miles, giving the Clarity class-best staying power. Refilling the tank takes three minutes, and the driver can choose between normal and sport modes while on the move. It will head to Europe next year and help promote hydrogen technology. We hope it will do exactly that, although the awkward styling and lack of infrastructure might still prove decisive. There was only one car drawing the eye over at Mitsubishi, but the EX concept was a strong statement of intent from a brand currently enjoying huge success with its Outlander PHEV. This concept is an all-electric compact SUV, roughly the same size as the current ASX. It looked great too, with a few hints of the Range Rover Evoque and the same wide grille as the facelifted Outlander. Swing open the pillarless doors and you'll find a smart interior, with a more minimal design approach than the brand's previous cars, although the boys on the stand got a bit upset with us when we tried to film inside. The company says the EX will be capable of 248 miles on a single charge and feature next-gen battery technology too, but it's highly likely that we'll see a plug-in hybrid version of the next ASX before it goes fully electric. The Mercedes S-Class and BMW 7 Series both need to watch out, because this is what the next Lexus LS is going to look like. The LF-LC concept was big and bold, with its enormous spindle grille, protruding headlights and a sleek, contoured body. The wheels are classic show car spec, measuring a massive 21 inches and using carbon fibre in their construction. The powertrain was as revolutionary as the looks too, with a hydrogen fuel cell driving the rear wheels, but also sending power to a pair of electric motors up front, turning it into four-wheel drive. 
Lexus say this layout makes for good weight distribution and dynamic handling. We can't wait to find out and grab a glimpse of the plush interior when it does become the LS next year. In amongst all these ultra high-tech self-driving concepts, the Kikai from Toyota was a brilliant breath of fresh air. A cross between a steampunk royal carriage and a 20s hot rod, its design is meant to reconnect us with the mechanical nature of cars. To do that, every major part, from the suspension arms to the engine, exhaust manifold, and the radiator are on show. There is even little windows in the front so the driver can see the wheels touching the tarmac. Inside, the OnePlus 2 layout puts the driver in pole position, with big analogue dials and a wonderfully finished interior too. Fun, interesting and radical, it was great to see normally sensible Toyota letting itself off the leash with this fabulous little concept. Could this be the return of the MR2? It certainly felt like it as Toyota flexed its muscles in Tokyo and gave us a compact, lightweight, rear-drive sports car that would sit below the GT86 in the current range if it makes production. The spec list sounded mouth-watering, with a 1.5 litre petrol engine in the front with 128 brake horsepower, a 6-speed manual gearbox and two seats. It looked angry too, with a gaping grille and striking neon paint job. The interior was basic, but with a low driving position, single electronic speedo and rev counter, and plasticky dash, but this simplicity should help it keep the cost down, so it should come in at around £16,000. Very exciting. Some brands use concept cars as an excuse to go bonkers. For example, one look at the Toyota FCV Plus with its glowing wheels and space-age design cues is enough to know that you're looking at the product of some designer's wild flight of fantasy. Subaru, on the other hand, uses Tokyo Concept to launch a five-door hatchback, called the Impreza. Alright, so it might not be as exciting as some of the other cars here, but this Impreza showed off a new styling direction for the brand, and it'll be underpinned by a modular chassis platform, so it'll be lighter, stiffer, and more spacious than the current car. You won't have to wait long to see it either, with a full-bone production car due by the end of 2016. Although Yamaha is primarily a bike maker, and they had some pretty cool ones on the stand, including a bike riding robot, their main draw was a new sports car, built with the help of McLaren F1 designer Gordon Murray. The chassis uses a new kind of radical carbon fibre, which is incredibly lightweight but actually fairly affordable to produce. The styling had some nice nods to the bike world, especially the high-mounted rear exhausts, but Yamaha was remaining tight-lipped about possible engine options. They did say that the Lotus Elise was a feasible rival, so a £30,000 price tag is not out of the question, but the brand has teased us with concept cars before, without actually taking the plunge and building one yet. So that concludes another busy day at the Tokyo Motor Show. It remains a compelling and unique event on the automotive calendar, and I think you'll agree there was lots of stuff to get excited about. This particular show certainly had some running themes too, with alternative fueled cars like the EVs from Nissan and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles from Toyota and Honda ruling most of the headlines, although it's not clear yet which technology is going to win the way in years to come. Autonomous driving technology was also on the tip of everyone's tongues too, and how it will probably permanently change our relationship with the car in years to come. Still, it was refreshing to see that sexy sports cars still have their place, with gorgeous concept cars from Mazda, Toyota and indeed Lexus all dominating, with two-door coupes of all different shapes and sizes. And now for our final glimpse into the future, here's a vision of what the Nissan GTR of 2020 might look like. <laughs>